It's so nice to see you. Mm. Mm. Good, 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 good. Mm. Welcome to my house. Thank you. Beautiful. So today, it's all about you. I want to know about Prince. That's a tough one. Tough one, but it's you. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to have a discussion about you, how you started, UT Bank, the whole works, your family and everything. Before that, let me show you around. Okay, thank you. You meet some family members. Hi. Hi, this is Denta. Hi. This is Mr. Ampa. That's, that's, that's quick. Four bedrooms up, and then one master bedroom. And the kitchen is this way. But my most favorite place is the gym. The gym. So should we go to the gym? So we can go and have a look at the gym. Yeah, the gym. Okay, you Do you like sports? Now I'm not so much into sports, but I have to make sure that I keep my body trim because I'm getting old. I try to do the gym about two times in a week, and then I play golf over the weekends, and that's a good routine. It keeps me fit. Here we are, small family gym, but we've got almost everything. With the weights, the bench, and the multiple posing and treadmills. So that is why. How much can you pick up? It's not how much you can pick up, oh, but how many times you do it. Okay. So you can pick a heavy weight and do maybe just about five and put okay. it down. And you can take small weights, but I prefer doing smaller weights and, and managing it and doing a lot more of it. Okay. But it's good. One hour in the gym and you're, and you're fit done. to go. Every day? No, twice, twice, twice a week. Twice not, a week. not more than twice a week. Because you don't overdo it. Do you so swim? This is, I swim too. This is my favorite room it's here. You come and listen to music and work out. Not, not the underground. <laughs> His earlier ambition was to become a scientist and then he thought, mm, maybe I'll go into engineering. But he ended up in the army. His children say he's very principled and not strict at all. Joining me is Prince Kofi Amwabing, CEO of UT Bank. Kofi. I <laughs> to say. It's good. Yeah? Yeah, it's nice to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me, you know, in your beautiful home. It's, it's really nice. As I said, your early ambition was to become a scientist. Yes. What changed? Well, I think we all have kind of uh, childhood aspirations. Mm -hmm. So I was good in maths and the sciences, so then to be a scientist. Okay. Then I wanted to become an engineer, but I didn't like chemistry for okay. some reason. So I skipped chemistry sixth form and ended up doing physics, maths and economics, mm -hmm. which then meant I had changed direction from engineering yeah. to business. Mm. So then I entered the school of administration mm -hmm. and after school of administration, I thought my life wasn't together. Okay. I lacked a bit of discipline, I couldn't handle my own life. I mean, I was a bit irresponsible. Okay. You know, just running from one nightclub to the other, to the other, then get home about 6 a.m all the time, so I said uh, I should find something to do with my life. And incidentally, I was just reading a graphic and I saw an advert recruitment to the uh, military academy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like soldiers, we were fighting with them when we were on mm -hmm. campus. But I read it and I said, with my indisciplined life, maybe this could change course. You have three square meals a day, <laughs> you have a room to yourself, furnished by ordinance, mm -hmm. the salary and you have uniforms. And I said, then my problems are finished. <laughs> it's solved. Yeah. That is it, that's all you need. Yeah, so if, if I can, if I should blow the money or the money doesn't take me far, I'll still have three square meals a day. Mm -hmm. So that was my decision. Wow. So how was school life? Back school then? life was good. Um, if you're good in a school like the College, it guarantees your future. Okay. I couldn't face my dad with bad grades, so I had to always do well for him. No, not for myself. And he said, we have a contract. The contract is for me to study all the time and give him good grades and he will not fail in paying my fees. So we should count on it. Wow. So I don't want to fail with my part of the bargain. There's a saying that says life begins at 40. But for you, it kind of started at 45. Well, 45 is after 40, so it's still right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it might begin, but it was a bit slow and 45, it probably uh, started to take shape. So what was happening before then? What, what, what was ah, I was doing all sorts of things, what we call general merchant. Anything that you can buy and sell for a margin, 
you buy it and try and look to sell it for a margin. Then we got a bit specific, uh, we became importers, we were importing wines, tiles and stuff like that. Also went into sawmilling, then I got into air conditioning business, then I got into oil a bit, downstream, and a bit of midstream because I was a local rep for Elf Aquitaine, which was bought by Total. So how many years were you doing that before you started UT Bank? I put together from 1982 when I left the army until 1996. Oh. So that is uh, 14, 14, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. UT Bank, from being in the army, obviously doing this entrepreneurial kind of experimenting, failing, being successful in some of the businesses, and then why banking? The whole thing started when I had frustrations with dealing with the banks. So the issue is that with my background, I seen a graduate in business, uh, I was even lecturing at the stock exchange. I had done business for so many years. I was a chartered accountant and I couldn't raise money from the banks. So then I kept asking then, who get money from the banks? Mm -hmm. It means almost nobody. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing led to the other and I said, I think the banks are not serving the SMEs and the informal sector. And even for those of us who thought we were a bit formal or we had structures. Yeah. So the thing is, if they won't do it, someone has to do it. Yeah. Of course, we didn't have money to set up a bank, and it's not easy to set up a bank. Mm. And individuals have never set up banks in Ghana mm. before. Yeah. And we decided to set up a finance house. That will not go the normal way of looking for collateral and going through all mm -hmm. that rigmarole of you know, doing credit. But we'll do credit based on trust and understanding the business. And uh, of course, it was a bit naive, but mm. that was the whole mm. idea. Mm. Mm. And therefore, the name was Unique Trust. Mm. I think we establish a special trust with a the person, then we can lend. Then you can lend. From a small office? It is from one room office. There were four of us all by one table, no computer, no toilet facilities, wow. uh, one car, some two telephones and things like that. And then how did it grow from there? Ah, we made the normal mistakes. We didn't understand the people, we didn't have money to lend, we didn't even have clients to lend to. But we spent time walking around the market area in Cantaman to, to, to see what we can sell. Mm. I realized that people were lending informally at 50% a month. A month? Yeah. And even now it still persists. But one interesting lending that I got to know was people would take the money in the morning and bring it back in the evening. And that was 10% a day. So I said, well, it's not really the rates that should scare us because if people are prepared to take the money at 50% a month and we could lend at 20% a month, mm -hmm. we'll be doing them some yeah. service. So some of the first monies that we borrowed to online, we borrowed at 84% per annum. And people were saying, it's crazy, how do you pay 84% per annum? It's crazy, how do you lend at 15% mm -hmm. per month? But 84% per annum works out roughly 7% a month. And if, yeah. if we're lending at 15% a month, there was mm, a margin, mm, actually mm, yeah, too mm, much margin. Yeah. And that's how we started, lending at 15% a month and borrowing money at 84% or more wow. per annum. Of course, we had to be, know the business and be there when the client's monies come. Mm -hmm. And I remember the early days, I would visit the clients every day. Every single day. Every day, I would just go around and make sure they are all still in business. Yeah. And that uh, they are working mm -hmm. and that I have a good chance of collecting my money. Yeah. But then how were you able to do that? Because in Ghana, there's no address system. I always tell people that doing business in Ghana is not easy yeah. at all. Yeah. Because the kind of structures and institutions that you need yeah. for the business to use as a platform, mm -hmm. they are not there. Mm. So up to today, all our clients, we sketch to their homes, okay. to their offices, and to the collateral, and put it on their fire. And then we also have the problem with the individuals and their attitudes and our upbringing, our mm -hmm. cultures, which also come into play and makes everything mm. quite difficult. Mm. But you need to learn and believe in systems and structures and be disciplined to keep to those systems and structures. Mm -hmm. So the training in UT is about doing things in a limited number of minutes. Or, or days. Yeah. So the time you take to interact with the, with the staff or the client, make sure that it is the shortest time you need to perform that action. The only other thing is that make sure it's quality time. Mm. So they feel yeah. that they've been respected mm -hmm. and that they've, mm -hmm. been, they have, they've had a memorable experience. That's it. Okay. They say behind every successful man, there's a woman. Now, was there a woman that was behind Mr. Prince Kofi Amwa being at the time of him? 
I think mine is probably the opposite. Really? Yeah. So behind Kofi Amwabe is really no woman, but maybe some woman. <laughs> you know, because the thing is, by the time we started Unique Trust, my wife had left me with my kids. Wow. Which helped because then I had no family, so I could put all my energies and all my love into what I was Indeed. doing. So it helped, and I'm I'm nice with uh, my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Whatever we've achieved is is partly because of her yeah. action. Mm. So I'm not mad at her. Wow. So behind me, it's uh, no woman. No woman, but many other. Um, <laughs> a bit like that. <laughs> How many children do you have? Because I know I know Koku, I know Violet. Um, I have eight children. Eight children, and. How are you as, as a parent to them, towards them? I think I'm doing unto them what my dad did unto me. Mm -hmm. I, I am not strict as in uh, being petty as we do this, don't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. But they know what I stand for. Mm -hmm. And I think I've also created a kind of love that they don't want to break that relationship. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that I haven't even said, but I know it won't come to this house, is to pierce your ears or mm. do tattoo. Yeah or do dreadlocks yeah. and nobody does it because they know that the father can't stand yeah. it. Yeah, because a lot of Ghanaian, the Ghanaian family, it doesn't really happen. It's like daddy is almost yeah. kind of you're free to talk to your dad about certain things. Yeah, but I think we have to work uh, to change that. I mean, I had uh, a dad who was quite open on that front. I remember I, I asked my dad one time if uh, he was still strong enough to perform. <laughs> And he said, well, I hope you are not thinking about your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that liberty to mm. my dad. I mean, why not? And it worked. Yeah. So why yeah. change it? You know, so that's, that's, that's my attitude to mm. life. You know. Growing up, my father has always been my best friend. He's very down to earth and he has a lot of compassion. Now, when I say down to earth, I mean he's able to relate to people from all walks of life because he has so much empathy. He raised us to work hard for everything that we have. Like I started working in UT as receptionist and now I'm procurement support officer. He wants us to learn and understand it the proper way before we can even begin to grasp what UT is to Ghana and to us. He told us to never take our blessings for granted. Never ever. And we should always thank God for what we have. He's more of my best friend. So we have had really good times together. We went sky jumping. We had to jump 860 feet. Whilst we were on the lift going up. He says, son, let me take the lead. If anything happens to me, then you know that you don't actually have to jump off the building. I mean, when you have a father who's willing to risk his life, you're actually humbled and you admire him as well. I'm not that strict on my staff. We have what we call a Ubuntu spirit, as in I'm what I am because of what you are. Yeah. And we respect each other as much as yeah. possible. I have an open door policy. Well, my clients too. I have my telephone number in every branch of UT. So people call me to say all sorts of things. Wow. And I have to have the patience to listen to them because yeah. it's about seven yeah. people. As a business person, you are taught you must be ruthless, you must be hard, you must be cold, you must be driven by the money. But Mr. Moabing has turned that thinking on its head and has proven that First, care about the customer, think about how you add value to their, their lives and their businesses, and the money would follow as a consequence. Mr. Mopping is a different kind of leader. When you work with him, he gives you opportunity to dream. So my time at UT has been very interesting, and what I've been able to learn in the last 10 years, it would be difficult to find that kind of experience anywhere else. Wow. So is it all about work? Because I know you don't take that much annual leave. Throughout the year, Kofi is working, working, working. Is there any time for actually socializing, going away? I take my weekends very seriously. Okay. I put everything aside. I go to my village okay. and I relax with friends and we play golf. And so by the time I come back Monday, I'm really very refreshed, refreshed. a bit tired though, mm, because then mm. I regroup by Tuesday and things like that. So I don't really need leave, but occasionally I go on leave. I do a bit of sky jumping and then I do... Because you've been sky jumping with Kweku one yeah, time. Yeah. Mm. And I went scuba diving wow. in Australia. So I, I, I enjoy, enjoy life. Apart from UT, is there any other businesses that you're doing? UT is actually more than enough because it's not just about the bank. 
the properties? We have UT properties, UT life insurance, UT logistics, UT private securities, mm. and then we have UT in South Africa, and UT in, in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's so much, mm, mm. even just with the UT, mm, that mm. Uh, I think there should be more cloning of myself to be able to <laughs> carry with the task so I can put a bit of yeah. the <laughs> you know, But uh, I think we, I've got uh, people who are quite committed to the course. We look for mm. the right people. Yeah. And we set you up, you have to meet your targets and things like that, and yeah. you run your show. From the time that UT Bank started till now, were there any time that you felt like giving up? I'm not that kind of person. In actual fact, I like challenges. You know, the way we started as a non-bank, mm -hmm. it was a gamble we took. And, you know, interestingly enough, it was difficult to mm -hmm. get a banking license, especially for Kukrantimi Boy and his partner yep. and the people. And then you, you, you work hard and, and, and have a bank. It mm -hmm. was ahead yeah. of. Mm -hmm. But we decided, OK, we will list the financial service. So we listed it, mm -hmm. raised some monies, and then used the monies to buy an existing bank, mm -hmm. which was called BPI. Mm -hmm. And that was quite daring. In fact, people didn't know what was happening. All mm -hmm. the, of a sudden, UT is listing. All of a sudden, yeah. UT has bought a bank. And yeah. then it's like, what's all this happening? And then the real challenges came. Because when we bought the bank, we had a clash of cultures. Okay. You know? There was the UT FSL, financial services, kind of culture, mm -hmm. which was positive, intimidating. Yeah and we could get things done. Yeah. And then there was a BPI laid back, abused for a long time by these Malaysians, a very suspicious of management, no trust. Mm -hmm. And it took us quite some time mm -hmm. you know, for people to know that it's a new management style, it's about believing in ourselves, it's about uh, family spirit and respecting everybody. And things. At that time, it was really tough. Mm -hmm. But we've gone over that, and at least we're still one unit Mm. And uh, we had to go through unions that we didn't know about, counseling mm. and coaching and mentoring mm. and things like that to be where we are now. Wow. So but I never said, you never I've said had enough. I've had enough, never. No. Mr. Moabing is very much a man of his own mind. He makes his own decisions. Um, the things that set him apart in business are his tenacity of purpose, his self-discipline and the clarity of his thinking. Uh, it's been a privilege to see on a number of occasions the way he tackles problems. Um, he'll take a uh, pause, listen very, very carefully, um, process the issues, and he will come out with the one thing that everybody has been waiting for. Wow. What does it take to be a good entrepreneur? It takes a bit of discipline, taking risks, and takes a bit of taking your life into your own hands. So most people probably will start a job as a hobby. Yeah. But they must actually decide at some point in time if they think they have enough confidence the hobby is going to give them a break. Yeah. But you find them keeping it as hobby and keeping it as hobby because they don't want to move mm. to the next mm. step. So entrepreneurs, there's a bit of entrepreneurship in almost everyone. Okay. If you find passion in what you do, mm. then you can do it. Always look out for a sense of product that you really, really love. And if you have a good heart, you want people to experience mm. that. And that will make you an entrepreneur and a good one. And a good one. Do you think that this country helps entrepreneurs and SMEs? It doesn't. I mean, if you don't have addresses, the institutions, like the police, the judiciary, the public service are all mm. in the state in which they are. Mm. It's mm. very difficult for, for entrepreneurs. How? Because how, you want to register a document, mm. you know what you have to go through. Mm. Mm. You need a permit, you know what you have to go through. So people along the line just give up. And even for Ghanaians outside who want to come back home and have made their money, yeah. yeah. bringing the investment back to Ghana is a problem. But let's say it's not just the structures. It's the other aspect is to deal, to deal with the individuals themselves, the Ghanaians or the Africans themselves. Our attitude for business is so, so wrong most of the time. Your recruitment policy, your mm. procurement policy, your way of doing things is taken over by relatives, mm. by pastors, yeah. by politicians, by chiefs, mm. they tell you what to yeah. do. Yeah. And that, that is not good for anybody. Mm. Mm. If you don't put the right person there, the business will not flourish. So how do, how do, you, <laughs> how do you say no to family members? I say members? no to all of them. I wow. mean, I go to Grantumi, I come with CVs, maybe about 10 of them. Wow. And I bring them to my HR mm -hmm. boss and I said, these are CVs from my Grantumi yeah. people, see if they are okay. Mm -hmm. And they go through the, the whole process. process. I have brought them. Yeah. Maybe there's some uh, that are really good. Yeah. But you go through the same process. process. 
And I'm not saying because they are from Ukraine, to me, give them the preferential yeah. treatment. It must be difficult being a CEO um, and people expecting that you have money. And so I'm sure that on a daily basis, you have people coming to you every day. How do you say no? I'm sure they come for money because it's a bank. They do. <laughs> I don't mind paying people for a job done. Mm. But it's part of our culture for people to come for some of your money mm. because they are related to you one mm -hmm. way or the other. I go to my village, uh, all sort of people come there, I don't ask questions, I just give them some money. And so it's become a ritual. Mm. Like Every time I go, they have to come, line up, and I give them the money, ask them how they are, and wish them well. Mm. And I think the way they pray for you somehow, yeah. So, yeah. so it's good. You're sometimes very controversial. You say your mind, mm -hmm. should I say. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that you'd ever get into politics? Ah, I didn't know this one was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No. I don't think I'll ever get into politics. Not at all. I know for sure they won't even vote for me. Because the way I will say things, because if it's the truth, I have to tell you the truth. So I can't lie to the people. Yeah. But you need to lie to them to get their votes. Yeah. So I have a disadvantage right mm. there. Yeah, when people go to the masses and give them things, presents or gifts and all kinds of things, it means they owe. They, have, they must have gotten the money from somewhere. So when they come to power, they must pay their debts yeah. and the interest on it and make profit. Yeah. So yeah. there's no chance for you to really yeah. do your work, but yeah. uh, you have to compromise yourself and do all sorts of things. Mm. And that will be hard for me. You also learn to be part of a family. You learn to follow the rules and subject yourself to the rules. It doesn't matter who you are, what your position is. And that is something you don't find a lot, especially in Ghanaian leaders because they set the rules for others and they have the opportunity to flout it, but you won't find that working with Mr. Mabing. Mr. Mabing is by far the best employer I have worked with. I have grown in my role. I have had such a rich experience working with him and I have developed personally by working with him. Kofi, you are very inspiring. You inspire a lot of people. A lot of young people that are coming up look up to you. They want to be as successful as you, being Ghanaian and having made it in Ghana. You've won numerous amount of awards, including the Guba Awards. And Thank you very much. How do you feel when somebody tells you that you inspire me or you receive an award? How do you feel? I always think it's a result of a collective effort of UT, mm -hmm. not Kofi Amwabin per se. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make me feel like I'm walking on any high ground. So all the awards that I've gotten are dedicated to the team. I've seen people saying I inspire them or something like that. I think a lot of Ghanaians, especially the youth, want to do something and they want some kind of role model. So I'm quite available some of the time to okay. give some lectures and uh, go and give some talks in some of the universities mm -hmm. and some youth gatherings and things like that. I hope it broadens their, their outlook and it will contribute towards uh, them achieving what they can achieve. Mm. But it's not easy, and I wish the macro environment uh, will be improved a bit yeah. to enable businesses to thrive. Yeah. But all they say, we'll do the bit that we can, and the rest is for God. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having spent your time with me today on the show. Um, my last request is that I have a CV. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> but that, nobody can employ you. Are they? Why? Because you have achieved so much on your own. Oh. And you because can't leave you, you can't leave all that and come and take a month. Come come on, on, let's you face it. Oh my baby. Uh, we can talk. We we'll talk about it. When the cameras are not there. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us on the Dental Show. I hope you've been inspired by Mr. Prince Kofiamwa Bing and we'll catch you on the other side.